Hi, my name is Brian Caffo, and welcome to this week's Ask Brian part of our weekly newsletter. I got an interesting question this week from someone who emailed me about IID, and basically they were asking, when is this statistical assumption used? Kind of, I understand it a little bit, but I kind of don't understand it in context. And so that's what I decided to talk about this week. So just to start out with, IID, IID stands for independent and identically distributed. Okay, so the independent. The independent means you're modeling your data as if one observation is unrelated to the next. And let's draw an analogy to a coin flipping experiment. If I flip a coin, okay, my kind of belief in what's happening with a coin is that if I get ahead this time that it's unrelated to whatever I get the next coin flip. Okay, so the observations are sort of unrelated. That's what the independent means. Identically distributed, okay, is talking about the underlying mechanism that generates the data being the same from, from time to time. So in our coin flip, we might think, for example, that there's a 50% chance of heads and a 50% chance of tails, and that law that governs the probabilities associated with the coin flips is the same from one coin flip to the next. Okay, so that's where the assumption comes from. And I think at the surface, I think everyone understands that, especially when they draw analogy to coin flipping. What, what I think makes it a little confusing is when you think about applying it to your actual data. And that's what I'd like to talk more about in this video. So um, to do this, I want to talk a little bit about statistical models. Okay, so here we have our data, and here we have a population. And the model is what helps us draw connections between the data and the population. So IID is part of a statistical model. Now you might think even in our uh, you might think even in our coin flipping experiment, our IID assumption is a statistical model, and I think that's correct. So when you flip a coin, that's a perfectly deterministic process. When you flip it, there's you know, the me mechanisms, et cetera, are perfectly determined whether it's going to land head or tails. What we're saying is we don't, we're not modeling all those mechanisms. We're lumping those all together and suggesting those represent randomness. And we're modeling the process as if it's independent and identically distributed. Okay, and in that case, the model is so accurate that we often don't even distinguish between the fact that it is a model uh, and the, and the, reality of what's going on in a deterministic coin flip. However, in more complicated settings, like let's say I want to model a sample that I have where I recorded some binary characteristic like whether or not people have hypertension, I want to model every person, I want to model that as if it's IID. Okay, well what, is it, what am I saying? I'm saying each person's hypertension status is unrelated to every other person's in the sample and that the law that generates whether or not someone's hypertensive, the collection of mechanisms that I'm modeling as if random, right? These are all similar from person to person. The, the data generating mechanism is the same. So, and with that, we can then make assumptions about the prevalence of hypertension in that population because we've used the model to draw a connection between the collection of zeros and ones that we have and a population. Okay. So uh, at any rate, IID I think is an important component of a model and then we, we often typically add things on top of it. When, when our data is binary, we don't need anything else. If we say your data is binary and IID, then, then we don't need to know anything else. We know 100% 100 of what we need to know about the population. 100% uh, of what we need to know about the data generating mechanism. But if, if it's IID and continuous data or something we'd like to model is continuous, then we might need to know some, some things about the distribution itself. Okay, where I think it's, and I think people generally understand that. I think where it starts to get confusing, and I think what this is what the email was getting at, was, uh, was in different settings, it seems like I'm using IID very differently. And I think that's definitely true. So a person that is using uh, IID as a representation of the actual way in which they've sampled people, 
okay? That they flip the coin for every person as to whether or not they're going to be in the sample or something like that, okay? Um, th there's true random sampling, right? And they're modeling that. That's one thing, right? Another thing is where you just happen to collect the data that you happen to collect, right? And you're modeling it as, it, as if it's IID anyway. I think those are very different. Those tend to be very different circumstances. But in, in one case, we're kind of explicitly using some randomness in the design. In the other case, we're modeling the data a little bit more. I think if you're really interested in kind of this design-based statistics where you're, where you're really incorporating the randomness that you've explicitly used in the design, you're kind of operating in a different world. Okay, let's just stick to the most normal case, which is you've tried to get a random sample as best you can, okay, or your sample isn't random at all, it's just the people that clicked yes or no on your website or whatever, okay, then what IID is, is it's a part of this model. It's a part of drawing the connection to the, from the data to the population. And basically what that model is saying is, well, I think that people's responses or, or measurements of whatever type I got, that they're un statistically unrelated from one to the next, and that the law that generates them is kind of similar from one, from one measurement to the next. Okay, so that's what you're usually doing when you assume IID. Okay, so thanks for tuning in this week. Uh, hit subscribe if you get a chance. I won't have a video for next week. I'm going to be out of town next week, so I won't have time to make a video. Um, but I'll try and make it up with an extra special video the week after. Okay, thanks again for tuning in.